going to Roger Stone. Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. So much has happened since I talked to you Sunday. I've thrown out a lot of topics, a lot of issues. Where should we start? What's what's front and center? Well, it's very hard to know uh, where to start, Alex. I mean, first of all, you have the question of, uh, of voter uh, fraud, more precisely, uh, election theft. I mean, voter fraud itself, while not non-existent, as the left would tell you, is essentially more limited. The larger problem here uh, is election theft, the manipulation of what used to be known as the Diebold machines in common usage across the country. Now, if the Clintons would steal the election from Bernie Sanders, the nomination, as the DNC WikiLeaks proved they did, why would they not steal the election from Donald Trump if they can? Uh, I know among political elites, they poo-poo this idea, but from a technological point of view, this stunning video put up by CBS, not Breitbart, not Town Hall, not Daily Caller, not InfoWars, CBS, shows how simple and easy it is to program the uh, voting machines for a desired result. The polls, the manipulation of the polls, lawyers got caught red-handed, a number of others have, that's the precursor to the fix of the machines. In other words, you condition people to expect a Clinton victory, uh, and then you deliver that exact victory in the polls. How can this be combated is the question most Trump supporters ask me. And there are several ways. First of all, in the window that we have, 60 days, I advocate uh, registering, locating and registering a million new Trump voters in the very states that will be up uh, as a potential to be stolen. Uh, you can go to uh, restore get it exactly right, I think it's uh, RestoreAmericasGreatness.org, where there's a very active effort to locate and register new Trump voters uh, in states like Ohio and Pennsylvania and New Jersey and Colorado and Iowa and others that will be up for grabs. Secondarily, uh, we're going to need an army of trained poll watchers, people who know what to look for. Uh, I am seeking to contact and retain some of the country's leading experts on the computer manipulation of these machines to advise us. Uh, and then uh, lastly, uh, I think it is very important uh, that every single Trump voter be found and turned out. Uh, I don't have the confidence uh, that the Trump campaign will be able to cover every precinct, but I think perhaps with grassroots assistance, they will be. So we will be unveiling a comprehensive program shortly uh, to combat this election theft. Speaking of that CBS News report, Hacker demonstrates how voting machines can be compromised. If you go to YouTube and type in uh, election fraud U.S., you will see hundreds of newscasts, hundreds of experts, Diebold chief engineers, congressional legislature testimony, local legislatures in Florida and Ohio, and certified fraud and admitted fraud. And I mean, I mean, there's famous examples. But for Obama to go, election fraud, what's that? I mean, it's like Hillary saying, what's Turkey? You know, you know, when the Armed Services Committee asked her about the Turkish ambassador. I mean, they just play stupid over and over and over again. Here's a clip from that CBS News piece. I got to say, good job for CBS News actually doing some real reporting. Concerns are growing this morning over the possibility of a hacked presidential election. Experts believe a cyber attack this year could be a reality, especially following the hack of DNC emails. The ranking member of the Senate Homeland Security Committee sent a letter Monday to the Homeland Security Secretary. It said in part, election security is critical and a cyber attack by foreign actors on our election systems could compromise the integrity of our voting process. Roughly 70% of the states in the U.S. use some form of electronic voting machine. Hackers tell me the problems with these machines have been around for years. The system and the computer are both old and antiquated, with millions expected to hit the polls in just three short months for the presidential election, security experts are now raising some red flags. And I'm afraid the election's going to be rigged, I have to be honest. 
For weeks, because Donald Trump has told his supporters the outcome of the 2016 election could be out of his control. Good question. But for the hackers at Semantic Security Response, election day results could be manipulated by an affordable device you can find online. I can insert it and then it resets the card and now I'm able to vote again. The voter doesn't even need to leave the booth to hack the machine. And how much does that cost? $15. So for $15, I could hack the vote? For $15 and in-depth knowledge of the card, you could hack the vote. Semantic Director Kevin Haley says elections can also be hacked by breaking into the machines. The results go from that machine into a piece of electronics that takes it to the central counting place. That data is not encrypted and that's vulnerable for manipulation. How big of a hacking potential problem is this? Well, there's a huge potential. There are so many places in the voting process once it goes electronic that's vulnerable. One reason these voting systems are so vulnerable is their age. We found that more than 40 states are using voting machines that are at least 10 years old. Our system is as secure as we can possibly make it. Denise Merrill, president of the National Association of Secretaries of State, says the lack of funding keeps most precincts from updating their systems. All machines have to meet specific government standards. The idea of a national hack of some sort is almost ridiculous because there is no national system. In fact, the more than 9,000 voting districts across the country all have different ways of running their elections down to the type of machine they use. Merrill says there are checks in place to prevent fraud. Our voting systems are heavily regulated. They're tested both before and after. There are paper trails everywhere. By and large, I would say the American election system works very well. CBS learned that only 60% of states routinely conduct audits post-election by checking paper trails. But not all states even have paper records, like in some parts of swing states like Virginia and Pennsylvania, which experts say could be devastating. The Election Assistance Commission told us that they ensure all voting systems are vigorously tested against security standards, standards and that systems certified by the EAC are not connected to the Internet. All right, I'm going to go back to Roger Stone on this, but he wanted us to air this piece, and I'm glad we did. Now, I say good job admitting at least that these machines are easy to hack there's it's been it's happened many times but at the end they totally deceive the public maybe they're ignorant so let me enlighten uh, uh cbs right now right after kennedy got killed they started having the associated press coordinate with the states and then it would announce who the winner was then they changed the name in 1990 to voter news services and, and by the way mr stone has been part of famous recounts at the highest level so he's an expert we'll speak to him in a moment and skip the break to have more time but every major election, if you just Google Voter News Services, they've had so many problems, they changed the name in 2003 to National Election Pool, but was set up by the exact same group. So again, it was AP announced that Bernie Sanders was going to win by a certain point the day before because they, quote, met with the superdelegates at a rich person's house. Oh, I see. But they went ahead with the election. What they do is they will fix it in key battleground states, steal it, and then have... It called by this private consortium headed up by AP to go ahead and announce hands down what's happened, and then later it's hard to do a recount. Now, that's a layperson's breakdown of that, Roger Stone, stonezone.com, former campaign head for Trump. Uh, but is that pretty accurate, what I just said? Yeah, I think everything you've said is accurate. Uh, I'd make a couple points about the CBS video. First of all, it's not foreign actors I'm worried about. It's domestic those who have custody of the machines. Uh, the woman at the end of that video who says, well, the machines are heavily regulated, exactly. It's the regulators I'm worried about. So for example, the Diebold PES machine is in wide use in California. They're in the custody of the Secretary of State. I attempted to reach him, his name is Alex Padilla. I couldn't find him, unfortunately. He was out campaigning for Hillary Clinton. Uh, I remember well when uh, the Democrats went out of their mind because the Florida Secretary of State, uh, Catherine Harris, um, was actively campaigning and had a title in the Bush campaign. But you have an identical situation here in California. Uh, the machines are fixed after the fact. Uh, they keep the same number of votes. They just rejigger the total. Uh, and they've already laid the groundwork by manipulation of the poll. Unfortunately, this is also how you detect the fraud. If you take an honest poll, and we intend to do that, 
uh, and then compare the results on a precinct basis or on a subdivision basis, and the swing from the poll to the final results defies the mathematical odds given the time frame, then you have prima facie uh, uh, evidence of fraud. On its face, you have it. And expanding on that, Roger Stone, exit polls for my research are generally, depending on who conducts them, three to five percent uh, margin of error, very accurate. So we need to conduct exit polls in these key precincts, key battlegrounds to immediately cry foul if something uh, uh, doesn't show up uh, that uh, we expect to see from the real polls. Very definitely a part of the uh, of the plan that we are putting together to protect Donald Trump from election rigging. Uh, Trump himself, I think, has played a vital role already. Raising awareness. By heightening public awareness to this very real problem. I mean, it is almost uh, uh, laughable uh, in terms of the last couple of days, Alex. First of all, I myself uh, have been hacked into my personal accounts, my business accounts, my political work, a number of uh, my bank accounts have been accessed all within the last 48 hours. Uh, as soon as it became publicly known that I was uh, in communication with Julian Assange, now there is a massive effort on Twitter and Facebook to discredit uh, Assange. That's because the Clintonistas know that Mr. Assange, who I believe is a hero, uh, who's fighting the deep police state, uh, they know Mr. Assange has all of the emails that Huma Abedin and Cheryl Mills, Hillary's flunkies, thought they erased. Now, if those emails were worth taking the public heat for having erased them, it tells you that what's in them is extraordinarily significant. So now there is a giant effort online to discredit. This is the Roger Stone hack that we're talking to. You know. Well, I tell you, I'm just trying to think of the headline I should go with here. Uh, R Roger Stone uh, hacked after uh, t talking to Assange. I mean, this is like an espionage movie. And then we've got Democratic Press uh, Communications PR agent hired to shut down Seth Rich conspiracy theories. And it's a top consultant that works for the Clintons. This guy shot four times in the back, high level dealing with the emails. And then Assange... Uh, telegraphs on Dutch TV that he's the source and that these bombshells are about to come out. Uh, this is amazing. Yeah, there's so there is a there is a giant uh, effort online. This is the these are the twerps that correct the record, constantly saying that that we the Trump supporters are trying to uh, stage a constitutional crisis based on rigging this election. I say to you, no, Alex. Those who are causing a constitutional crisis are the ones who are rigging the machines. All we want is an honest count. If we have an honest count, there's no question in my mind that Donald Trump, despite the beating he's taking from the mainstream media, distorting and twisting and focusing on everything he says, while giving Hillary largely a free pass on the startling revelations that she's now under investigation uh, through their foundation at the IRS, that she did indeed arm ISIS. I mean, come off of it, David Brock. Uh, she armed ISIS. It's an undisputable fact, no matter how many. I was about to but say, they can't run from this. I mean, I mean, there's a sense of this is just mounting by the minute. And then real liberals, like Assange, who exposed Bush for bad stuff, and we thank him for that. I said, well, no, if he's for real, if he goes after Obama and Hillary, he's been doing that. And I tell you, he's a real hero. I wish he would go ahead and release the data dump now I understand it might have more power if he did it a month before the election, but I tell you, we need to bring Hillary down now, Roger. Well, I think he may choose to release it before each one of the debates, release some emails just before the debates so that Hillary has... Well, for it. your safety and everybody's safety, because obviously they hit your emails and took over your bank accounts and everything, um, governmental level, to find out what you're up to, what you're doing, just for everybody's safety. Um, did Assange give you any info? Because I, mean, I think if you've got it, you've got to put it out now. Uh, I'm uh, not at liberty to discuss what I have, uh, and I, I, have, I kind of have a foreshadowing, but nobody affects Julian Assange. Nobody tells this guy what to do. He is, uh, he understands. No, obviously, no one's implying that. What I'm saying is, because, I mean, we we haven't talked about this, because I only talk about stuff like this on record. If I was Assange, you'd be a smart guy to give some data caches to, and I'd be giving it to hundreds of trusted people right now. 
Well, I lost some data in the in the hacking. Uh, some things that I was about to publish, manuscript for my next book on the Clintons has been stolen. Uh, some other items, nothing that is not recoverable. But for example, my entire contact list, of people I deal with regularly, is wiped out. It's gone. And so by the way, I, you don't like to bitch and complain, but we have to report this as a war. You're being audited. You've paid them, and they're just saying you didn't pay your taxes or two yeah, years no, ago. Yeah, no, the IRS is harassing me over 2014. I paid all my taxes and everything owed. And they just say that they're ignoring your check, they're ignoring the cash check and your return. They just say you're a criminal and you didn't pay. Well, first of all, I've been through this. Somebody filed a false return in my name. That means when I went to file my return online, the, the system kicked me out. I had to hire an attorney. We filed the correct uh, uh, forms, and we paid our taxes. This is all documented in writing, in the correspondence between my lawyer and the IRS. Now the IRS has amnesia. Like, none of this happened. We're right back where we were. You never paid your 2014 taxes, despite the fact that I have a canceled check and all this correspondence. Well, no, it, it's, it's harassment. It's amazing, and, and, and they are pulling out all the stops, folks. I mean, you, I mean, it is incredible. Let's get down to brass tacks here. What is the true nature of the polls? I mean, I see so many that are frauds, but at the same time, I don't want to discount them all. Uh, from, from internal polling, from your own research, where are Trump and Hillary right now in the general election? But also, what about those battleground states? Is he really losing ground there? No, I, there's no evidence that he is. He remains in range. There, he is ahead in some of the battleground states still. I believe he's still ahead in Florida by a point or two. He's behind in others. The gap is not nine points. It's not 15 points. In every case, he's within range. I must tell you, I never expected in this race for him to be ahead of Hillary until the end. Ronald Reagan was never ahead. Explain of that phenomenon, because you've been saying that for over a year here on the show, that you think it's going to be tight till the end. Well, first of all, you have so many cataclysmic uh, and, and big uh, level events here. The debates are going to change the numbers. Mr. Whatever Mr. Assange drops and Trump's and Hillary's reaction to it could change the numbers. The country is almost evenly matched between left and right. They've done a better job over the years of voter registration than the Republicans have ever done. There is also now a growing chasm between Trump and the Republican National Committee because I was about to raise that, though. We've got, he's the main fundraiser. He's bringing in big money now. And you've got the old Republican establishment saying, take the money away from Trump, give him nothing. They're openly trying to sabotage things for Hillary because he'll just quit recruiting and getting money, and then that'll hurt all the Republicans. They're obvious saboteurs. Well, but the other thing that's true is we cannot reach agreement in terms of who ought to be targeted. In other words, there are blue-collar, union-member Democratic votes out there who will go for Donald Trump, but will probably not vote for the balance of the Republican ticket. If you're in the Trump campaign, if you're in the Trump camp, as I am, you want those voters contacted and turned out. The Republican National no, Committee... Strategically, we need Trump. Trump. Strategically, we need Trump. We can't trust new crops of Republicans that get, you know, taken over every time. In, indeed. And, and they just want to turn out the Republican vote in order to protect their congressional incumbents. Virginia is a perfect example of this. Trump has great crossover appeal that the rest of the party ticket does not have. We need to be targeting Trump voters, not Republicans. Roger Stone, other points that need to be gotten into here. I mean, look, they hire this top Democrat crisis manager uh, to, quote, take over statements for the family in Seth, uh, death, Seth Rich's death. Uh, we have other folks, friends of D.C. linked lawyer that was suing over it being stolen from Bernie. Sean Lucas freaked out by his death. We've got a bunch of other deaths going on. I mean, this smells. Yeah, you have, you have Alex, uh, the deaths of Seth Rich, John Ash, and Sean Lucas uh, in short order, all of them connected to the heist of the Democratic national nomination by uh, Hillary with the inside mole assistance of Debbie Wasserman. Schultz. So, and when you raise this publicly, these are three deaths, you're immediately smeared as a conspiracy theorist. Well, if it were one death, perhaps you'd say, all right, a coincidence. Three deaths? Really? I don't think it's unreasonable to scratch your head and say, why are three insiders with intimate knowledge of the machinations at the DNC that stole this nomination for Hillary uh, now pushing up daisies? That's a entirely... I'll tell you this, Assange has got giant uh, eggs because 
if you look at this, he knows it's hurting Hillary. She's degenerating under the stress daily. Whatever's in these emails has got her scared to death. You can see it. She looks like a cornered, hairless rat. Uh, they're totally freaking out. And Assange is just pushing and playing chicken with these folks. This is such a historic time. Well, and beyond that, it's very clear that Hillary's health is not good. Um, I have reason to believe that the documents uh, that were leaked recently from the hospital in Mount Kisco, New York, which is close to Capua, are... Indeed. Oh, you believe those documents are real? I believe that they are. I, I am still researching it. I am not finished. But um, the physical evidence, just the video you can watch of her, and now this mysterious African-American doctor who is with her at all times. He runs around with a, with a tranquilizer dart. Uh, hold hold uh, on. I want to see if we can do five more minutes with us or maybe longer. Roger Stone, there's so much to cover. StoneZone.com. We have the new shirt they designed, the Clinton rape shirt, InfoWarsStore.com. All right, we got Pastor Manning popping in later. I want to open the phones up as well. Do five more minutes with Roger Stone. The energy in this country is so over the top. I don't even know what to say anymore. I mean, it is just an amazing time to be alive. The evil, the corruption is so out in the open now that it makes my head spin. And there's got to be a breaking point when we've got Google and, and all the other computer companies and tech companies admitting they're for Hillary and CNN admitting it and all the rest of the craziness and Hillary obviously so ill and then MSNBC saying, oh, Trump doesn't sleep enough. He's crazy. He's unfit. This is an incredible time. Roger Stone, in your gut, what do you think is going to end up happening with this election? Uh, I see a narrow Donald Trump win. Uh, I see Trump triumphing in these debates because uh, the only thing predictable about Donald Trump is that he's entirely unpredictable. So Hillary will never know where he's going to come. Could it be... Bill's history as a sexual predator and Hillary's history of bullying and intimidating his victims. Could it be uh, Benghazi and the arming of ISIS uh, and issues pertaining to her tenure as Secretary of State? Could it be the epic corruption of the uh, Clinton Foundation? Uh, could it be the 1994 crime bill, which incarcerated an entire generation of young black men for nonviolent crimes? including the possession of small amounts of drugs, uh, a law that Hillary said was necessary because black people were super predators and had to be brought to heel. It could be any of those things or anything else. So I think that the, uh, that the uh, debates are an opportunity for Trump. I think he will exploit that opportunity. Uh, and therefore, and when you add to that, what I think will be the bombshell revelations dropped by WikiLeaks, I think by election day, Hillary is thoroughly discredited. Do you know or are you at liberty to give us any other hints? I mean, Assange has said some of it is Hillary sending weapons to ISIS, the total proof. I mean, we know that happened, but it'd be great to have that. Any other hints? Uh, nothing that I'm able to talk about. I'm not going to upstage uh, one of the great freedom fighters uh, in the world today, Julian Assange. But but you've a little bird told you or you just have a feeling that we might see this dribbled out at the debates? Uh, we have mutual friends, uh, and uh, often I was very careful in my words. I never said I met with him, I never said I spoke with him. Uh, we have communicated through a trusted mutual friend, uh, and uh, he is committed to this course. Nobody is changing his documents. His documents, as always, will be genuine. And I think that he's got information on the entire uh, U.S. establishment. Power. And like you said, no no Saudi connections, no Russia connections for Trump. He's clean. Uh, he, has, uh, he has certainly sold apartments to some wealthy Saudis. Uh, he has uh, no real... He's never met uh, Vladimir Putin. Unlike Hillary, who took huge amounts of cash... Sure, exactly. Everything she blames him. Trump for, she's actually doing. So this is just an incredible time. Uh, Assange, though, when he talks about Hillary, just shakes his head with the info he's got. I mean, it, imagine what it must be like to just actually see what these people are involved in. Well, but to make it absolutely clear, and I wrote this for Breitbart, we now know for a certainty that the DNC heist documents were not leaked by the Russians, had nothing to do with the Russians, were hacked and first made public by Crucifer II uh, almost a month ago. 
Uh, and when that didn't get the appropriate traction, he took them to WikiLeaks, who then leaked them. So the whole idea that this is Putin, this is what the Russians, that, that uh, Donald Trump and Paul Manafort are somehow in bed with Putin is nonsense. By the way, Putin doesn't particularly like Paul Manafort because Manafort helped convince the Ukrainian president uh, uh, Yanukovych to join the European Union. No, I know. It's all total bull. All right, uh, Roger Stone, we'll talk to you again soon. Have a great weekend, StoneZone.com. The Clinton uh, rape shirt is up there, folks. Get it, wear it, expose these monsters. Thank you, Roger Stone. It's available at InfoWarsStore.com. We'll be back. Stay with us. I'm going to open the phones up right now. The toll-free number to join us as we enter the second hour is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. And you're welcome to talk about any of the big subjects that we've been getting into, the deaths of these different Democratic operatives that were exposing election fraud, the latest development where top Clinton State Department aide helped Clinton Foundation uh, while they were working for the State Department and, and, and money being sent from African dictators uh, to the foundation, and then they're given favorable deals. This is something we've all known, but now it's all coming out. Totally illegal. Meanwhile, last hour we played the 45 times Secretary Clinton pushed the TPP, the secret global government deal, masquerading as a trade deal, but now she says she never supported it and will always fight it into the future. Isn't that just special? Meanwhile, I've got this stack of news. And again, we're going to go to your phone calls, 800-259-9231. Let refugees into your homes. France pleads with citizens to help ease migrant crisis. Bring the jihadis directly into your homes. The French government, now, now Germany's already started this, where you live in Section 8 housing. They say you got to bring them in or you won't get your, quote, free housing. And this is for retirees. They're taking retirees' homes, basically. The French government is struggling to tackle a migrant crisis that they advertised and told folks to come. There are currently 147 reception centers, oh, reception centers across France, but these are in massive demand as desperate refugees continue to flee the Middle East. So the answer is cater more. That's why they brought down Syria, opened it up as a gateway from the Middle East into Turkey, the famous Muslim invasion route. Housing minister has pledged to build another 50 centers before the end of the next month. Good. But she also called on French people to co open up their homes to migrants if needed. Several organizations have already promised to help. The Pope says you should too, but the Vatican isn't taking one person. And that's 200 foot walls. Two wealthy Sharia Muslims kept slaves in their Texas home. This is from the U.S. Chronicle. They told a judge that Muhammad had slaves and punished them was Islamophobic. That's right. Um, the Texas couple have been found guilty of engaging in forced labor. Hassan al-Hamoud, 46, and his wife, Zanidab al-Hosani, 39, pled guilty to the crimes of holding a person against their will and forced labor, otherwise known as slavery. But it's not when Muslims do it. They tried to convince the judge that their actions were acceptable because their prophet, Muhammad, the creator of the religion of Islam, kept slaves of his own. Therefore, any punishment that they received would be Islamophobic. Hopi Indians are allowed to take mescaline. That's their religion. You are allowed to grab slaves and keep them. Mm, loving and liberal. I'm sure the Huffington Post will probably have an article about how we need to uh, be more cuckled and wear burqas. By the way, I didn't get to it yesterday, but there was an article about how Salon's giving up on being a pedophile promotion bureau and supposedly some Trump slash quasi supporter guy is taking salon over which is because it's failed and you've done your kamikaze mission of lying and disinformation and all the rest of it so now you're going to try to flip back the new salon very different from the old salon new ceo adds conservative voices plans relocations away from political coverage well just please don't have articles with guys salivating over four-year-old girls in videos i mean you know come on Conservative leaders call on media to report on genocide of Christians. CNS News, uh, the UN admits it's doubled the last 10 years. There is persecution of Christians at all-time highs.
Talk show host is Alex Jones. He's a he's a conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. Radio talk show host and conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. And deeply, I think, racist. I just got called racist by MSNBC. I don't want that man to have a gun. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Alex Jones Show. Watch the free stream live at infowars.com forward slash show. My fellow Info Warriors, I am very excited to be able to announce to you the introduction at InfoWarsLife.com of a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWars Life formulations like Survival Shield X2 and Super Male Vitality. Just go to InfoWarsLife.com today, select your favorite product, click on Auto Ship before adding to cart, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. Every time you choose Auto Ship at InfoWarsLife.com, you get 10% off and you you won't have to worry about running out and having to reorder next time. And of course, you can cancel with one click anytime. As you know, I'm all about the idea of a 360 win. And the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com is a sure win for everybody. A win for liberty, a win for health, and a win when it comes to big savings. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today and save 10% on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting auto ship at checkout. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139.